Well, greetings viewers and voyeurs who have got that funk, and this is a video response to my friend Mr. Repsion and his recent video called Dealing with Resentment. Um, Daniel, I think you're an asset to YouTube. I hope you keep doing what you're doing on this website. Um, I'm a big fan of yours. I apologize in advance if this video comes across as condescending. It's certainly not meant to. Um, rest assured that I do not underestimate your integrity or your intelligence. Um, it's just my experience that advice videos can come across a bit condescending, so I wanted to get that sort of disclaimer out there straight away. Now to the rest of my audience who might not know the subject matter, I will obviously link Daniel's video in the description box. And to give you a brief summary, uh, summer of 2013, uh, Daniel had uh, met a young woman who he basically took a fancy to, and he started to spend his time and money and attention and affection on her. And she let this continue for quite some time, And uh, but the feelings weren't uh, coming back in the way Daniel sort of hoped for. And uh, after an extended period of uh, attempted courtship, uh, she finally had to, he basically had to prize out of her the information that she had a boyfriend and therefore was not available. And so I think it's fair to say that Daniel felt that she led him on, okay? And he has feelings of resentment about this, okay? So that's the, that's the, the, the short version, okay? Anyway, so right, let's, let me talk to Daniel directly now. Uh, Daniel, there's a couple things I want to say to you. First of all, negative emotions in general, uh, as they get called, um, do have some value in our psychology. And so things like anger or sadness or guilt or resentment, um, they're unpleasant to experience. And so people tend to think of them as negative emotions. And what we think of as negative emotions we tend to try to avoid because they're unpleasant to experience unfortunately you can't really live your life without ever feeling angry or sad or guilty or feeling resentment about certain issues it's impossible to live without those things but when you try to when you try to sort of um, deny these feelings exist what you end up doing is you repress them and when you repress negative emotions um, I'm afraid to say that they will come out. They will build up and build up and build up and it will come out in either some kind of outburst and or some kind of self-destructive behavior. And Daniel, if you still feel strong feelings of resentment after eight or nine months or whatever it's been since, uh, since you found out this person had a boyfriend, um, I would respectfully suggest that you haven't really dealt with it in a constructive way yet. And I hope this video uh, sets you on that path. Now. Uh, there are three bits of advice that I want to give you. Two of them are quite similar. Um, and the first one that I'm about to give you is the easy one of the three. Because, Daniel, there's um, no right or wrong way to, to look at this situation, but there is, there are better and worse ways to look at it. And the, the better ways are the ways which uh, help you to heal as quickly as possible. So step number one on that road, in my opinion, ought to be for you to look at the big picture and be grateful grateful, Daniel, because this person you were interested in was obviously a little bit on the side of duplicity because she obviously strung you on. She led you on. She allowed you to buy her things and take her places and so forth when she had a boyfriend. Therefore, she was not only being duplicitous towards you, but she was being duplicitous toward him as well. She would not have been a good girlfriend. So you should thank your lucky stars that you didn't wind up with someone like that. No matter what her other qualities may have been, and no matter how you might have wished you could have been with her, step back and look at it objectively, my friend. You're lucky. Be grateful. And I think all by itself, that is a huge step on the road to self-reconciliation in terms of your own feelings of resentment. Now, the next two bits of advice I, I have to give you are uh, a, a lot more challenging. It, it's, and, and let me stress that this is a process. It's not just something that you can just do like that and be done with it. It's a process. Um, let me give you a metaphor. Uh, resentment, like a lot of other negative emotions, um, if I give you a metaphor, uh, take a string that's just been tied into this most ridiculous knot, right? 
if you just start tugging at this damn thing in various different directions trying to untie it, the chances are very, very good that you'll end up making it tighter and more difficult, possibly even impossible, to untangle. So, first, what you have to do is inspect the knot. See how it was tied so that you can then best untie it. Introspection is invaluable in general in life, um, but it requires self-honesty. We need to be honest with ourselves and when it comes to this issue that you're talking about, Daniel, and this resentment that you're feeling toward this person, I would respectfully suggest that uh, you resent yourself as well. And so my second and third advice is forgiveness. Uh, you know, you can say what you want about Christian philosophy, and I have said quite a bit about it myself. But uh, one of the best parts about Christian philosophy is this whole notion of the value of forgiveness. Forgiveness and mercy, I think, uh, are undervalued um, in modern culture, and I think they really need to be valued and acted upon um, aggressively, in fact. Now, there's two things that you have to, two people you have to forgive in this situation, Daniel. First, you have to forgive yourself, and I'll go into that in a second. And secondly, you have to forgive her, and I'll go into that last. Um, as pertains to forgiving yourself, you might say, well, why should I forgive myself? I didn't do anything wrong. Mm. <clears throat> well, uh, we need to forgive ourselves when wrong things happen to when other people wrong us as well, because whether we admit it or not, there is an element of you feel gullible. You, you, you're, you're angry at yourself because you allowed yourself to get emotionally invested with someone before you knew it was safe. You're also probably angry at yourself for being, um, for, for not listening to the voice. I mean, Daniel, if you had to actually press her to get the information out of her that she had a boyfriend and wasn't available, that tells me that someplace in the back of your consciousness, you had an inkling, you knew. Your brain wasn't completely turned off by your desire. Your brain was still functioning. It was just basically overshadowed by your desire. Unfortunately, no matter how smart we are, when it comes to issues of romance and security and so forth, uh, we do tend to believe what we want to believe much more readily than we believe the facts. If the facts are contradictory to what we want to believe, it's very, very easy to uh, cloak the whole thing in denial and, uh, and, and, and pretend that you're dealing with it when you're really not. So, number one, let yourself off the hook. Daniel, we have all done it. We've all fallen for someone we couldn't have. We have all fallen for someone who led us on. It's, 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 it's human nature, man, and you need to just let yourself off the hook completely. Sort of go, oh my God, I can't believe I let myself do that. I was so silly, blah, blah, blah. But there's no reason to beat yourself up about it. All you need to do, really, is acknowledge it, learn from it, and try not to make the same mistake again, which you're going to do. But at the same time, you know, uh, every 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 time this type of thing happens, it'll it'll make you more and more aware of the different ways it can happen. All right, so that's number one. Forgiving yourself is so important, Daniel. Um, I know it sounds a bit cheesy and maybe a bit Brady Bunch or whatever, but it really, really is uh, a big deal to forgive yourself. And I think you'll find when it comes to any issue of resentment, whether it's this resentment or any 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 other resentment you feel, if you follow the the internal pathway from resentment all the way down, you'll probably find that the root is in your ego. None of us like being rejected. None of us like being led on. None of us like feeling like we aren't as smart as we want to be. And so when you've had all three of those things sort of challenged by this person who's basically uh, you know, led you on, um, it's easy to resent yourself for your failings. Just don't do it. Let yourself off the hook. We all make mistakes. <clears throat> as long as you learn from your mistakes, Daniel, they're valuable. And that's where I'm going to leave that. Last but not least is obviously trying to forgive her. Now you might say, well, you know, she was in the wrong. Why should I forgive her? Well, uh, there's a couple of answers to that question. Number one, um, 
again, step back and look at the big picture. Who among us doesn't like to feel desired? Who among us doesn't like a bit of attention? Um, unfortunately, there are some people who want to have their cake and eat it too. She quite clearly uh, was invested enough with her boyfriend to uh, stay with him and not be tempted away. But she quite clearly also was addicted to her own ego to the point where she was quite willing to allow you to lavish her with attention and affection and gifts. So, you know, recognize it for what it is. She wanted attention. You gave it to her. You weren't necessarily asking for anything in return for it. So in a sense, from her point of view, she probably doesn't think that she really did anything wrong because she never actually told you to do these things. You did them of your own free will. So I would say forgive her for being a human being. We all, unfortunately, have these same character flaws in varying different degrees. And we all sometimes hurt other people. So if you ever want to be forgiven for the things that you do wrong, which inadvertently usually hurt other people, you need to be prepared, prepared to forgive other people for the things that they do wrong to you. As long as there's no lasting damage. And Daniel, that part is up to you because if you take my advice and look at the big picture and, and realize how lucky you are that nothing happened with this woman and you can forgive yourself and you can forgive her, you've grown. If you do those three things, you will have grown as a person. You'll be more prepared for these types of situations and, you know, once bitten, twice shy, forewarned is forearmed, you know. So hopefully uh, you'll be a better person internally and a better person externally in terms of the way you deal with people. Um, it's really easy, Daniel, to uh, develop a hard shell. I, I've made videos in the past talking about my issues with trust. I find it very difficult to trust people. But uh, I think you'll find that uh, there's a good side and a bad side to everything. If you trust everybody until they give you a reason not to, which is what I try to do, there's a good side to that because you know I have more uh, enriching, fulfilling relationships because of it. But there's also a bad side because there will inevitably be people who will take advantage of my good nature and who don't deserve my trust and basically abuse it. But I'd rather have those inconveniences than the inconveniences of being a cynical bastard who doesn't trust anybody because that also has a different set of inconveniences. Number one, I don't think I would like myself very much if I was that kind of cynical bastard. So I choose the set of inconveniences that I choose. It's the same with dealing with resentment. You can, you, can, you can deal with it however you want, however you think is best. But at the end of the day, I think, I strongly believe, that if you can forgive yourself and forgive her and look at the big picture, you're going to be better off for it. And I lost my train of thought, Daniel, so I'm going to have to end the video. Fuck! And here I was saying at the beginning that I'm going to sew it up in some sort of cogent manner. And it's just gone completely out the window. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, please forgive me for being a human being and, uh, and losing my train of thought. I hope this video has helped you in some way. Oh, bloody hell. Anyway, um... Daniel, if you're not familiar with my catchphrase, uh, it's something that I beg that you take to heart. May all your ups and downs be ups.